Church, we are more than conquerors. For greater is He, Jesus Christ, who is in us than the one who is in the world. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, welcome to our midweek Thursday service. In this season of fasting and prayer for our church. I hope that wherever you are, you are praying, you are fasting, seeking the face of God. Hallelujah. May we commit tonight ways to God in prayer. Father, I thank you. Yes, Holy Spirit, speak, we are listening. I give you all the praise, mighty God, the honor, the glory, and adoration. There is none like you, mighty God. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, mighty God, that your word continue to reign in this season. Thank you, mighty God, that Father, I'm speaking with the tongue of the learned. The word in season to those who are weary. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Wow, what an interesting season. What an interesting season. But I just want to let you know that in everything that is happening, Jesus is still the Lord of our lives. Jesus is still the King of Kings. Jesus is still the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight's sermon is simple. I just want us to look at the person of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? What is it that he has given us? What are we in him and what is he in us? We need to understand that because the understanding of who Jesus Christ is, what he is and what are we in him, will give us strength to soldier on this season. This is the season that the enemy is trying to be the Lord of the church. But no, it will never happen. Jesus is still the King of Kings. Jesus is still the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let us go to Luke. If you go to the book of Luke, look for... I want us to have a conversation tonight. Is that fine? We can have a conversation. L look for... I want us to look at some interesting things that happened to Jesus Christ and that are still happening to us today. Look for this one. He said, then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. I want you to look at an interesting word here. Verse 3. He said, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended... He was hungry. Who is they? Who is they? Who, 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 is, who is they? Afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Meaning, whenever you, in, you engage into prayer and fasting, you are not alone. Jesus Christ was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And the fact that he was led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness did not prevent the enemy from tempting him. So many times in our lives, 
we believe and know that we are in the right path. We are doing what Jesus Christ, what God has instructed us to do. We believe that we've been instructed by the Holy Spirit to do it. That doesn't stop the enemy from tempting you. Why? Because Satan is always want to put his fingers where they are not needed. However, tonight I'm not here to talk about him. And let, let us continue reading. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus Christ answered him, saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. Then the devil, taking him upon the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I've given you, their glory for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you worship me, I will be yours. And Jesus answered to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the high pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself from there, from here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. When the devil has ended every temptation, he departed until an opportune time. I want to put it to you this evening that they only respond to the current situation is the response that Jesus Christ used. The word of God. It is written. Hallelujah. In the uncertainty that you are facing, child of God, in the trials and tribulation that you are facing, child of God, your response in everything that is happening around you, your family, your community, your country should be one. It is written. What is it that God is saying about your situation? You see, Jesus Christ has set a perfect example. He, he, he has set a perfect example that where the word of God is, there is a spirit of resilience and endurance. Hallelujah. Where the word of God is, there is a spirit of resilience and endurance. Jesus Christ has showed us perfectly that you can endure any temptation. You can endure any situation. You can resist any situation, whatever it can be, as long as you stand by his word. Hallelujah. If we go to the book of Revelation, Revelation 19 verse 11 to 3, there is some interesting facts of this. Revelation 19, verse 11 to, okay, Revelation 19, verse 11 to 13. Revelation 19, verse 11 to 13. I say, now I saw a heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a rope dripped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the word of God himself. Jesus Christ, when he was met with the situation that, that, that were meant to cause him to stumble, his response was simple. It is written. Because why? He trusted the word of God. If Jesus Christ himself trusted himself as the word of God, this should be our response to every situation that you meet. I want to, I, I, I want to put it to you, child of God, that whatever situation that comes your way, there is a solution for that situation. And the solution is Jesus Christ. The solution is the word of God. The solution does not lie with your neighbor. The 
The solution does not lie with your bank. The solution does not lie with your family. The solution is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the solution. For he himself quoted himself that it is written. What was he referring to? The word of God. The word of God is the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every scripture concerning the greatness of his name. And he has received this greatness because he raised from the dead. I mean, I can only trust one person who can lay the life, he can lay down his life and pick it up again. Who is that person? Jesus Christ. The one who has the name above all names. The king of kings. The lord of lords. His name is Jesus. I want you to make a decision tonight that I might have tried everything else. I want to put it that even Christians, when situations are tough, sometimes we go off our wing and try everything else except Jesus Christ. I want to put it out that he has a name that is above all names. And in his name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Who is this man, Jesus Christ? He is the man, born not out of a man. A man conceived out of the Holy Spirit. When angel Gabriel visited Mary, Mary asked him, when, how could this be since I do not know a man? When angel Gabriel said to Mary, you shall have a son, Mary knew that biologically it's not possible. But the angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. He who is to be born out of you shall be called the Son of God. Who is, who, who is the Holy Spirit? He is God the Father. Because Jesus Christ said to us, the Father in me teaches me what to say. Who was, who was he referring to? The Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are one. It took, it took the Holy Spirit, the Father, to conceive Jesus Christ, the Word. So I want to put it to you that in the Word of God, there is the power of the Holy Spirit in the Word. The Bible said in Revelation that the rope that he was clothed with was dripping in blood. Whose blood is that? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a powerful name it is. I want to put it to you tonight that do not put your trust in anything else. Let your trust be restored back to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Do not put your trust on anything else. Do not go to the left or right. Go back to the cross. For in the cross, that's where the solution is. In Jesus Christ. The son of God. I love it. After when he came. From, from, from being tempted in the wilderness. He began to release. His mission statements. In Luke 4.19. He began to release his mission statement. 4.18 to 19. He said the spirit of the Lord. Is upon me. For he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recover of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Those are the six things that Jesus Christ presented. As his mission statement to, to, to the world. That this is what he's here for. What, 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 but there's one thing that is important. That he said. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me for. You need that anointing of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The one who conceived the word. Wow. Can you see how, how blessed we are? Can you see how empowered we are? The same Holy Spirit 
who made made to be pregnant with Jesus Christ is the same Holy Spirit who is becoming the anointing upon Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ take on in the form of humanity, he said, I am dependent upon the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord to accomplish one, two, three, four, five, six. That, that what we should do when we call upon the name of Jesus Christ. We are not calling upon the name in vain. When we release the word of Jesus Christ, when we release the word of God, we are not just releasing the word, we are releasing the word that carries the anointing. That word carries so much power. The word that created the heaven and earth. I want to put it to you that somebody said something very powerful. He said, no scientist, no, 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 no genius, no engineer has ever conceived in their mind what is holding a tree together, what is holding things together. I want to put it to you that everything that you see, everything that you touch, everything that you can feel is being held together by by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the power that fills all in all. If you can check Ephesians, Ephesians 2 verse 23. Let us, let us go there quickly. I want you to see something. That it is this power that fills all in all. Ephesians 1 23. Am I right? Yes. He said, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Who is that person who fills all in all? His name is Jesus Christ. I want to put it to you tonight that everything that you see that is being held together is held together by the power of Jesus Christ. He is the one who is holding everything together. Everything is held together by him. He is, he is the one who fills all in all. When you call upon the name of Jesus, when you release the word of God, you are not just releasing any other word. You are releasing the name of Jesus Christ because the other name of Jesus Christ, it is the word of God. It is in that word where the fullness of God dwelleth. It is in that word where the power of God dwelleth. It is in that word where the glory of God dwelleth. It is, the, it is the name of Jesus. The name above all names. The name that holds together everything. You should ask yourself. They didn't know when they were putting him on the cross. When they were nailing him on the cross that they were using his power to nail him on the cross. And they didn't know that the cross that he was hanging upon that cross was was put together by his power. Without his power, that cross could have been powder. Without his power, that cross could have just vanished. But they didn't know that he subjected himself to crucifixion so that you and me can live. He is Jesus. He is Jesus. The son of the living God. He is Jesus. The son of the living God. Put your trust back to him. Do not mind the situation. Do not mind what's happening around the world. Do not mind what is happening around your family. Do not mind what is happening around your job. Do not mind what is happening in your marriage. Do not mind anything. Put your faith back to Jesus Christ. Because it is very much possible that we as Christians, sometimes we put our faith in religion. Some of us will say, even say, I have fasted and nothing happened. I have prayed and nothing happened. I have given and nothing happened. I want to put it to you. Say, I have used the name of Jesus Christ. I guarantee you that something will happen. Because it is the name above all names. All universe, all more than 16 billion galaxies in the universe, all six, six, more than 16 billion stars in the universe, they are all held together by his word. 
The son, even to this day, it is still obeying his commandment. You shall rise from the east and settle in the west. It has never changed direction. The ocean is still where he put it. The soil is still where he put it. The mountain are still where they put it. Why? Because his word is power. He is the word. What he says stays. What he says cannot be moved. Just imagine what is the word that Jesus Christ has released upon your life. He said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I want to put it to you. As much as the mountain is still where Jesus Christ placed it. As much as the sea is still where Jesus Christ placed it. As much as the heavens are still where they are. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against this church. Why? It is the same way that placed the mountain where they are. It is the same way that placed the seas where they are. It is the same word that commanded the sun and the moon to be where they are. That same word is saying to you tonight, to you the church, because the church is not the building. The church, it is you, the child of God. The church, it is you, my brother. The church, it is you, my sister. The gates of haters shall not prevail against you. You are protected. You are defended. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? He released his mission statement. He said, well, okay, can we just go quickly to look for? I love what he said then. I love what he said then. Look for 18. Let, 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 let us read it. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It is said that, so he came. Can we start from 16? So he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. As his custom was, he went to church on Sunday. So as Jesus Christ's custom was, he went to church and standing. And he knew that his responsibility was to read the scroll. But that day, it was not just a custom. That day, it was a presentation of his mission statement. He said, as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me too. Holy child of God. The master, Jesus Christ himself, as his custom was, he went to church to release the word of God. Don't be surprised why the enemy is fighting so much against the church. Because it knows that that was the life of Jesus Christ. As his custom was, he used to go to the synagogue to, to read the word of God. Anything that is the custom of Jesus Christ. Satan will fight against it. But I want to put it to you. The gate of haters shall not prevail against us. Hallelujah. Let us read. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. Number one, to preach the gospel to the poor. Who are the poor? Those who are the poor in spirit. Because poverty starts in the spirit. When you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, no matter how rich you are, you are poor. Because your wealth cannot give you joy. The Bible says the, the blessings of the Lord make us one rich and brings no sorrow. He's referring to you, the rich man. He's referring to you, the rich woman who does not know peace, who is dependent upon sleeping tablets to sleep. He's referring to you, child of God, who is thinking about money more than the word of God. He's saying, I have come to preach the gospel to the poor. He wants you to be rich first with his shalom, the peace that is only released by the word of God. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You whose heart is broken because you have lost your job through COVID. You whose heart is broken because you have been looking and seeking for a savior and you don't know one. Jesus Christ said, I'm the healer of that heart. I'm the healer of that heart. Just look back unto me. So, if you read verse 26, he said, then he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down and, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. It is time for the church to fix their eyes on Jesus. It is time for the church to fix our eyes on Jesus. That is where we'll be able to heal the broken hearted. Hallelujah. He said, he said again, he has, he has been sent. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives. There are those who are the enemy of this world, who the God of this world has blinded them. They have been held captive by the enemy. Others are being held captive. They are worshipping their ancestors. They are worshipping images. They are worshipping creation instead of the creator. Those are who have been held captive. Even there are those in the church who have been held captive by their past. They have been held captive by their generational past. God is saying, I've come to set you free. But if you fix your eyes on Jesus, not on your issues, the captives shall be set free. Church, we are more than conquerors. For greater is he, Jesus Christ, who is in us than the one who is in the world. We cannot be defeated. The captives shall, shall be set free. He said, the recovery, he has sent me to the broken hearted, to proclaim the body captives and recover of sight to the blind. There are those who have been blinded. They don't know whether they are going forward or backward. You don't know whether your marriage is going up or down. You don't know whether your finances are still there or not. You get paid, but you don't know where your money is going. You are blinded to the works of the enemy to your finances. You are blinded from knowing the truth about Jesus Christ. You are blinded from knowing the truth about yourself because some of you you are describing yourself about because of your past. You have allowed your family background to define who you are. You are blind child of God. You are not your family background. You are the sum total of the finished works of Calvary. What Jesus Christ has died for on the cross is your portion. You are not your background. You are not what your neighbor has said. You are not what your parents have said. Somebody might have said to you, you shall never be anything. Those ways have blinded you. I want to put it to you tonight, child of God, that you are recovering your sight. Jesus Christ, who is the light of your life, is lightening up your world. You are able to see who you are. Why? Fix your your eyes on him. When you fix your eyes on him, his glory begins to reflect to your life. You begin to see who you are in Christ. Why? As he is, so are we in this world. As you fix your eyes on him, you'll begin to realize that as he is, so are you in this world. Hallelujah. Who is this Jesus Christ? Who wants you to, to, to see? You have done everything, child of God. Some of you got loans after loans. You get a credit card to pay another credit card. You get a loan to pay another loan. That's blindness. Trust Jesus Christ with your finances. Trust God with your finances. He knows what to do with that bet. How do I know? Because I've been studying about the altar. There is something that I've discovered about the altar. That in the altar, there is a sacrifice. And in the sacrifice, there is a covenant. And in the covenant, there is a promise. In the promise, there is faith. He delivers. Who am I talking about? Jesus, the sacrificial lamb of God, who was sacrificed in the altar of God. God, so that we can have a 
covenant with God which was promised to Abraham. He's faithful. God wants to make you whole. He wants that blindness to see. You might be having sharp eyes. You can see, you can see five kilometers away. But you are, you are unable to see two minutes away spiritually from your life. Because you don't know what will happen the next, the next two minutes. But I want to put it to you. Let Jesus Christ open your eyes. He said, he has sent me to set liberty those who are oppressed. You might be oppressed right now. Many people are oppressed, but they don't know where their next meal will come from. Jesus Christ, when he was about to feed the, the 5,000, he asked the disciples, what can we do to feed these people? He said this to test them. He knew what he was about to do. And they look and say, they say, they say Master, even, even 200 denarii of bread won't do anything. Why did they mention a denarii? Because then one denarii was equivalent to a, to a day's salary. Legally, did they know that they are talking to Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. He knew that he can provide. I want to put it to you that even in your situation where you don't know, you are oppressed by not knowing tomorrow, I want you to know that Jesus Christ lives. He is about to do something. There is something that I saw that is very much interesting. If we go to John, John 17 verse 4, he said when Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ said, I finished all the work you have given. Okay, can you, can you read John 17 verse 4? Before you can finish looking at it, there is something that I want you to see. That you are the product of the finished works. Jesus Christ said, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have finished, which you have given me to do. Jesus Christ saying to God, I have glorified you on earth. How did he glorify him? By believing in him, doing his work. And he said, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. But what did he mean by that? Because there were still, there were still sick people on earth. There were still hungry people on earth. There were still homeless people on earth. Jesus Christ is mentioning those words. He has never been to Africa. He has, he has, never, he has never been to New Zealand. He has never been to the Philippines, to, to the Latin America. But he's saying to God, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. He didn't heal the whole world. And yet, he's presenting his work as finished before God. Why? Because he knew. He knew that he, he is living outside time. To him, Jesus Christ, you were already born. You existed already. You have received him. He knew that you are part of the finished world. As you continue to believe in him, as you continue to do his work, you are part of what Jesus Christ has presented to God as finished words. As you preach the word to those who don't know him intimately. As you open the blind of those who don't know him. As you, as you heal those who are bruised. You are continuing with the finished works. You are part of the finished works. When Jesus Christ said, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished all the work you have given me to do. He knew that you are here. Don't allow your mind to be oppressed. Don't allow your mind to be oppressed. Why? He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is here to proclaim unto you the acceptable season of the Lord. You are here in the acceptable season of the Lord. You are where God wants you to be. Just change your focus. Change your focus. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Why? Everything listen to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you that. When, when, when you speak, when you speak, when you speak about the name of Jesus, when you speak the word of God, 
Satan cannot tell the difference between you and Jesus. So don't speak the language of the world. Speak the language of Jesus Christ. Speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Who is this Jesus? He is the creative Christ. He is the creative Christ. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. Mm. In him was life. He doesn't just create. Some of us have created, you have made chairs. Some of us, we have made we have built buildings. We call them wonderful creation. They, they, they creative us. But those us that you have created does not have life. Jesus Christ, when he creates, he gives life. He has created your future. Your future is alive with possibilities. Child of God, wipe away your tears. Smile. The creative master, Jesus Christ, is intervening in your situation. There is life. And I also call him the compassionate Christ. He is not just creative. If you read Matthew 9 verse 36, that, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them because they were wearing scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. What is compassion? Compassion is when, the, is when the feelings are accompanied with action. Jesus Christ, when he had compassion, he did not just say, oh, shame. No. His compassion was accompanied with action. He healed the sick. He fed them. He rose the dead. He healed the blind. The lame walked because he had compassion. I want to put it to you that the compassion of Jesus Christ is coming upon your situation. He's making you whole tonight. You are who? What Jesus Christ wants you to be. He wants to take you somewhere. He wants your life to change. He wants to move you from one level of glory to the other. He has compassion. And also we have this crucified Christ. Who is this crucified Christ? He's the one who looked at you. And he said, God, I see they have sinned. I see that they have been separated with you. I'm going to be the bridge. I will die for them on the cross so that the fellowship you had with them before can be restored back. He said, the curse that was released on mankind, I will carry it up on myself. The Bible says he was made before beyond recognition. He took all your sicknesses. He was, his, the Bible said they could not recognize him. He had, he had the cancer. He had the sugar diabetes. He had the blood blood pressure. He had all the sicknesses that you can think of, including COVID. He carried it on the cross. He's the crucified Jesus. When we say, by his stripes we are healed, we are talking about the crucified Jesus. The one who loves you. The one who died for you. I want to put it to you tonight. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Fix your eyes upon him. It is easy to lose focus and look at everything else that is happening around us. But I want to advise you tonight. Put your eyes upon him. He loves you. His love for you has never changed. His love for you has never changed. As when Galatians 3.13 said, Christ 
He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He even become a case for us, for it's written, case is everyone ranks on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You are the candidate of the promise of the Spirit through faith. Believe in Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Believe in Jesus Christ, and you shall be healed. Believe in Jesus Christ and you shall be made whole again. Believe in Jesus Christ and everything about you shall be put back to place. Some of you might say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. My company is about to retrench. It's about to lay off people. You don't know what I'm going through. I'm not sure what I'm going to use to pay the school fees. You don't know what I'm going through. My house is about to be repossessed. I'm not sure about my car. But there is one, I might not be sure. I might not know. But there is one thing that I know. Jesus loves you. He who has given you those things will protect them. Just for his name. For the sake of his name, he will come through for you. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is the word of God. His word is the sword of the spirit. The Bible says the word of God is a double-edged sword. It divides soul and spirit, bone and marrow. Allow the word of God to separate you from these issues and go and sit at the feet of Jesus and let his shalom restore you. Wherever you might be, I want you to to stand up and say, Jesus, I'm calling upon you tonight. Jesus, I'm calling upon you tonight. Jesus, I'm calling upon your name tonight. Jesus, I'm calling upon you tonight. You are the only one that I know. Just, just, just stand up wherever you are. Just say, Jesus, I'm calling upon you. I've trusted in everything else. I've missed you. I'm a Christian, but my eyes were not fixed on you. I'm a Christian, but my eyes were fixed on my issues. I'm born again, but my eyes were were no longer fixed on the cross. And if you don't know him intimately, I want you to pray with me tonight. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Come into my life. I surrender my life to you. Be the Lord and my Savior. Give your life unto Jesus. He is the only one who knows your tomorrow. I love the song that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know, he's the only savior who is not dead. They went to his grave and they were told, he is risen. Death could not hold him down. He defeated death for your sake. And he has given you the power of attaining, the authority to use the name of Jesus. I want you, I want you to know that every problem has a solution. And that solution is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we honor you tonight. We give you the glory. That Jesus, you are still seated on the throne, making intercession for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, whom you sent, who is someone like you, our intercessor. Holy Spirit, who is our advocate. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way in us, our faith, our trust, and hope is in you. 
Jesus, we love you. Without you, we are nothing. You are our life. You are everything that we have. We bless you, mighty God. As we continue to decrease, you increase, Lord Jesus Christ. Siraba Koshia. Peria K. Sandio K. Paziete Rikase Rosia. Perico Siande Mbekesa. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, don't forget uh, our fundraising. We are about to get that land. Don't forget group A, group B, you know what to do. Use the account number that will appear at the end of this sermon. There will be an account number. Use it to do the right thing. God bless you. You are blessed and Jesus is Lord. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. I thank you.